Wow. Oh boy. What a quick nap and something feels wait, something feels weird. Oh. Wait, holy crap. Huh? How on earth did I become a poor man's Alice Cooper? Imagine walking on ice, and somehow instead of falling, you're going to just uh, pull your shoulder wrong. And walking around in the dark because you're trying to close the blinds, but forget to turn on a light. And you kind of stub your, your shin on the coffee table because you can't see. Am I just clumsy, or is this a sign I'm starting to get old? You know, it's like you make one wrong move and then suddenly your back is out for a week. God, I hope that doesn't happen to me. But I guess I should look forward to hump day because it's uh, middle of the week, even if it's been very cold and slippery. So I should probably treat myself too. And spoiler alert, I'm probably going to be cooking a little bit of meatloaf tonight. I had an idea of that in mind a while back when I was trying to do this during Christmas time. But that one didn't seem to work out as well on the count of I tried to upload a 4K video when my computer could not handle it. I'm going to have to get some upgrades on it equipment. But you know what? Eventually I'll put that episode together, even if you still see me in Christmas uh, garb. I'll wear a Santa hat in July. If somebody wants to celebrate Christmas in July, then so be it. That will make up for the Christmas that we missed out on. Wait, what was I talking about again? Oh, meatloaf. But of course, I think I should be thankful for some of the simpler things in life. A simple hump day brew. And I'm changing things up a little bit here. I'm going a bit Japanese right now. I decided that I haven't had Sapporo in ages. Most of the time I would order that if I was like at a sushi restaurant with some friends. But I think the very last time I had it was some outdoor terrasse somewhere around the old port in Montreal. And the cool thing is that the tap itself had like a samurai sword on that too. Or is it a katana? I don't know all the terminology for this, but bottom line, I deserve having some Sapporo right now. Having this might be turning up or around, and maybe I'll be turning Japanese. Yep, through the montage. I got your picture, I got your picture. I'd like a million of you all around myself. I want a doctor to take a picture so I can look at you from inside as well. You got me turning up and turning down, I'm turning in, I'm turning right, I'm turning Japanese. I think I'm turning Japanese, I really think so. Me spilling beer seems to be a running theme these days. I guess a few drips could be, uh, it could have been much worse than just that. Like that last time that my uh, check had exploded on me. Bloody hell. So just as a recap for my uh, meatloaf that I was talking about, that is essentially like my burger recipe I'd done a while back when I was really starting to do the full episodes of the Cheese Cafe. And in case you need to have a reminder then, look over here. Follow that, you'll see the early days before I really found my groove. So essentially, it's the same ingredients that you would use, like your basic meat, garlic, onion perhaps, breadcrumbs, you name it, 
The only difference is that instead of setting it on fire, like you'd set the cow on fire. Well, it's actually a morbid thought to think about, but... <laughs> but instead of setting the burgers on fire on the grill, you're just going to be baking in the oven for a little bit of time. But it still comes out super tasty too. So let's get started once I'm done the turning Japanese. Ah, it may have been a one-hit wonder, but you know what? What a song. Everyone remembers that now. And if you didn't know it, you're welcome. Well, well. Once again, we are ready to get started. So just to reiterate, most of the recipes you're going to find are going to involve one pound of ground beef. And it's going to be the lean cut, so it's not going to be too moist and uh, heavy. Because you're going to add a lot of moisture to this too. But me personally, I try to go for around two pounds, give or take. Because I figured with meatloaf, you're not going to really get much of it with just like one pound. You really want to double it up so you have enough to bake in there. And there's no order that you have to put all these ingredients in, just as long as they're all together. So first thing I'm going to do is get some regular breadcrumbs. I'm going to put, see this is a quarter cup. So for this amount I'm going to put half a cup of breadcrumbs, just like I did with my burgers. Let's get a bit of a breading here. Oof, boy. This is something that my mom used to make uh, quite a bit too. But knowing of my taste back then, I wasn't really a fan of uh, onion. And even to this day, sometimes onion could be a bit finicky for me because of the taste. And I'd like to think that I have better taste now and I'm more tolerable, or at least I can handle a lot. So I'm still going to add it in. No biggie at all. So next, I guess I could do my seasoning. This is a basic one too. Just one teaspoon of salt with, let's say half a teaspoon of ground pepper. I have a pepper grinder I like to use sometimes too, but for stuff like this where I know I'm gonna need an increment of quarter teaspoon, half a teaspoon, I like to have this stuff handy to be able to mix it in for flavoring. So that's my seasoning, that's my breadcrumbs. Next is gonna be Worcestershire sauce. Really basic uh, sauce here, but it really uh, serves its purpose as well. One pound you would probably use about a tablespoon, so we're gonna double that up over here. And my mom has admitted too, that whenever she made the meatloaf, Worcestershire is like the one thing that she never included in the past. And she did enjoy the burgers when I would just send them her way over the summer too. So I think she figured out a little uh, secret ingredient to give it the extra taste. And I'm not talking about the other secret degree, which is love, tenderness, and affection. That goes without saying. If you don't love what you're cooking, it's not going to turn out great, and you haven't done it properly. I think that's what I was supposed to be saying. Okay, now for the next bit of moisture is going to be two eggs. And you want to make sure they're large eggs too. Crack it on the side, and hope you don't get any eggshells in there. And if you do, well, you can either fish it out or you cannot care and just eat it. Who knows, maybe there's some extra nutrients in eggshell that nobody's told us about. People always used to say it was a conspiracy about having too much eggs is bad for you because it has cholesterol, even though it has a good kind of cholesterol too. Plus it's protein. I don't know. You hear about these weird science facts that have happened over the years, such as, you know, that uh, fat is bad for you, but then turns out that sugar is actually the worst ingredient that you could use, but people were covering up the fact and blaming it all on fat instead. I don't know. It's like when it comes to nutrition and dieting, there's this competition with these kind of additives and ingredients. Seriously, what the hell's up with people? Yeah, I know, Yoshi. In case you didn't know, that's one of my cats meowing in the background. That's the big tubby Garfield, too. So I should probably wash my hands so I can get started on the onion and the garlic. I'm going to show the finishing touch of that because you see me chop onion, you see me sniff onion, and you see me chop garlic. You know how that goes. So we'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. I got all my onion chopped up and I got my garlic minced. I didn't realize I uh, forgot to put the quantities in here, but here's the rule of thumb. One pound of beef, you could put about uh, one half cup of onions, or however much you want. And you can use like one to two cloves of garlic per uh, 
one pound of meat. I didn't really measure, I just thought I have a small onion. Nobody's gonna really wanna use it because the medium and large ones are the best ones for cooking. And the garlic, I'm running low and this is gonna get the job done. So I'm gonna just throw this in here and I have all my ingredients for the meatloaf. And then it's gonna look like this. Nice hodgepodge of whatever it is. Every bit of ingredient. It may not look pretty just yet, but we still have some finishing touches to do. It's hard to really enjoy beer when you got the scent of onion uh, pounding in your face. It kinda makes you wanna cry. Sad songs say so much indeed, I guess. So I'm gonna put my hand in here, get that all in, mix it all together. You really gotta beat your meat well in order to get this all mixed up. If this is an episode of Archer, this is probably where he would be saying, Hey, phrasing. Ah, yeah, I'm trying to spew whatever cheese I can to amuse myself. We are in curfew after all, we gotta find some kind of humor. So you want to just mix it in really well, just so that everything is blended in and then is mixed onto the interior too. There's no exact size to this. You just have to go by common sense. You just want it all blended in so it doesn't look like you just put egg, breadcrumbs right on top of meat and call it a casserole. And then once that's done, you do it for about a minute or less. Huh. I want to show you what it looks like now, but my hands are dirty. They're infected with cow. <sighs> Gotta go wash it now. And then go manipulate my meat and then I guess wash it yet again. This is the one problem with being in the kitchen. You always end up getting yourself dirty. It's such a dirty living. So now I'm gonna be preheating this to 350 to be able to cook this up. And now that my hands are washed, this is what it looks like. The other monstrosity with just like a dumpage full of ingredients is now all blended together to become a work of art. Hallelujah, everyone. As for a side dish, I'm kind of thinking I want to check what kind of state my potatoes are in right now. If they're good, I may be able to bake a few wedges. If not, I might have to improvise something and then I'll have to check with the potatoes at a few neighbors. Don't ask me, it's a long story. And in terms of potato usage, I guess this is some good time to share a bit of advice. You don't want your potatoes to be too wilted because then it's a sign it's going to be going bad. And if it's wilted too much and soft, once you slice that, you're getting the most uh, atrocious smell ever. These right now have a few spuds growing out, but it's not the end of the world. It just means if I want to cook them, that I'm going to have to peel them off and then be able to dice it up too. Just hoping it's not going to be all brown and rotten on the inside. But if they aren't, I'm going to have some potato therapy to go with this. Which is good because if you remember that garlic sauce I had done a little while ago, la 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 la, thank you. That uh, only lasts for about a good two weeks, so I want to have a good amount of that to use as well. And I'm going to do it similar to what I did with these potatoes the last time, except I'm going to add some thyme and oregano. Those are actually key ingredients to be able to make Greek potatoes. So hallelujah as well. Going to try something different. Oven looks like it's been preheated at 350, so I'm gonna improvise a little bit. I'm gonna take a pizza pan, spray it with a little bit of canola cooking spray, then lay the meat on here and then put it in. There, let's get this one big hunk of beef. So manipulate it just a little bit. There. We get every last bit of gunk from here so I can mix it in and not have anything go to waste. There. So this is how you want your meatloaf to look. Your mileage may vary. It's going to be a nice, long, well, essentially piece of bread. With some uh, chopped up cow in there, too. The good news, too, is it's not too hot. Well, this isn't hot, so I can get this loaded into the oven with one hand. While I have my uh, infected hand here. So put that in. And I'm going to put my timer for one hour to let this cook. 
whatever time I still need for my potatoes, I'll just uh, tack it onto this afterwards. Good news too, so far my potatoes do not look like they're rotten, so that means I should be able to make them into some wedges. Happy days, everyone. Oh yeah, gotta wash up again. All my potatoes are chopped. Yeah, it's not as plentiful of a yield as the last time, but you know what, I don't care. I just want to have some potatoes with my stuff. I'll find out what that message is afterwards. So, I'm gonna oil this up, I'm gonna add some garlic, I'm gonna add some thyme and oregano like I had mentioned, and then we'll get started on it. Ugh. The mess, always the fun part of the kitchen. So while you would definitely want to measure this under normal circumstances, this is an exception for me because I kind of want to just get this done. So I'm just going to lay a, a little bit that I think is going to be an appropriate amount of olive oil. Then I'm going to shake some, where are you? Bit of oregano. Luckily I have my restock of this so I don't have to worry if I run all out of it. But typically this would be one teaspoon of oregano, one teaspoon of basil, no not basil, it's a thyme that you want, which I'm all out of right here. So a teaspoon of thyme, teaspoon of uh, oregano, and you'd use like maybe one or two cloves of garlic, but you can add a little broly if you think you're going to be using it a lot. In this case, I don't want to chop up any more garlic, I just want to get this in the oven so I don't lose as much time. That's my onion. Now, garlic powder here. So once you're done with that, besides uh, working around with your spice rack, you just want to massage it like this so that it's evenly coated in oil and that you have all the seasoning, or at least some of it, have come into contact with your potatoes. Mm. And looking at my oven, I got like 47 minutes left for my meatloaf. So worst case, I'll just put this on for like an extra 15 minutes on the 400 uh, once it's done. Just so that these potatoes are not going to be um, undercooked. And there we are. These are going to look nice and tasty. So, hang on, I'm my own cameraman here. Ugh. All right, dramatic uh, fit zoom. Use the bottom rack on here. There we have it. So 46 minutes, these potatoes are going to be cooking, and I'll see from there how much more it's going to take. I should probably finish up my brew and uh, wash my oily uh, seasoned hands. All right, rations are running low. I'm going to have to refuel. So my big question is, do I want to go for another kind of rednecky beer or do I want to go for something classy that's a bit more musical cheese like this last one here. I'm gonna leave it for you to decide. All oh, right, I don't know how to do electronic polls on this video, at least not in real time. Uh, one of these days I gotta get up to date with technology. I still have an old Nintendo system after all. Gotta get with the times. Okay, I'll come to the decision myself. Hmm. Okay, I think I've made a decision for myself. I thought it was going to be redneck, 
But I'll save that for another day. Today I'm going to go a little bit more classy for musical cheese. This brewer is called Le Grimoire. And it's one of my favorites from them. It's IPA Dezio. It's like a white IPA. So you already know there's a combination of a white beer, which is made with orange, coriander, and the usual stuff, and an IPA that has some hoppiness. And the beauty of this is that it's only a 5% or 2. Comes straight from Granby. What an honor. And why did I want to do the uh, IPA de Zier? Well, I guess I kind of wanted to think back to old Christmas parties where after a couple of drinks, you probably want to hit the dance floor uh, and flail your arms and legs as much as possible too. And especially with something like this, maybe you'll uh, want to pay tribute to uh, Isis or all those other Egyptian gods while you're listening to some Egyptian ska in the background. Nightbolt to Cairo, you know exactly what I was talking about. I mean, you watch their dance moves, that green screen, the cheap special effects, just uh, the mannerisms. <laughs> you can tell they're kind of uh, inebriated when they film that video, <laughs> but that's what kind of makes it awesome. It's a fun one. Highly recommend it if you like ska or if you like uh, British New Wave and such. Yeah, they're, more, they're known for a lot more things than just the song Our House, which you probably heard before too. So, I think I've reached my musical quote of the day, and I still have half an hour till potatoes and cow loaf are all set to go. What a beautiful thing. Well, let's take a look at the status of our meal here. Oop. No light in the oven anymore. Cow loaf is starting to come out well. Potatoes look like they're really cooking good. I'm gonna need to give it a little bit more time though. Something tells me that. All right, and not a bad Grimoire White IPA. Note to self, gotta buy this a little bit more. When you wanna have a white IPA without the strength of a hard IPA. Timer is up. It's a good thing I have my sexy zebra bits all prepared so I can administer the calmose therapy. Ooh. There we are, people. We are looking at some top notch meatloaf over here. The onion and the garlic look like it's kind of obvious. As for my potato rations, they look okay, but something that's healthy inside, I should probably put it for a little bit longer. So, I'm gonna put this up to 400 and maybe cook it for another 15 minutes. And there we are. Huh. This cow loaf looks like it's got super juicy and kind of exploded uh, in its own pleasure, I suppose. I guess that happens when you're baking your own juices. Whatever. 15 minutes from now, my potatoes will be done, and then we'll be ready to have some supper. Some tasty stuff indeed. As for what you're going to dip this meatloaf in, you know, there's no set rules. You can use ketchup, you can use mayo, you can use whatever you want. As long as it tastes good for you, it's all good. That's the idea with cooking. Well, more so than baking, because baking you have to be super precise when you're putting your ingredients in. Cooking, you can uh, do a few changes and it still gets the job done. What a beauty.
somebody explain it to me. How does garlic sauce mixed with honey jack and canola cooking spray make me become, well, this thing? I don't know. I feel like there's a page missing somewhere in that story. Well, I guess if I was to cap off everything, I'd say the meatloaf was awesome as usual. My potatoes were really tasty. The oregano and the thyme gave it a nice flavor. I love my garlic sauce. And even the cheese bread uh, gave it a nice uh, finishing touch on the meal. But before I go, well, I guess if I'm going to go now, I should probably go get a bath, take a shower, or maybe see if I have some leftover holy water from Halloween and just get this off. Ugh. Well, this has been a weird edition of the Wandering Yuki Cheese Cafe. Great cooking, great brews, great, uh, well, randomness altogether. So, thanks for watching everyone, and if you like what you see, don't forget to hit that subscribe button below, leave a comment, hit a, well, I guess send a request if you want, if someone wants to use the comment section for a change, because, you know, it's there for a reason, and above all else, share the cheese with anyone you think will enjoy it. Peace, y'all.